Have you ever heard of the calcium shell? That's what I'm gonna talk about today. It's not something to be excited about, but it's really important to know. And it's not something that's talked about in mainstream medicine or anywhere else. And it was something that was really stumping me with my own health until I figured out what was going on. So for me, what happened was I moved into a new apartment, which was awesome, but at the same time, uh, it had hard water, didn't have a water softener. And so what I started noticing is having a lot of joint pain um, in my hips and in my joints and almost like opening my hips, it hurt a lot. Everything I was doing, I felt really achy, tired, and I didn't know what was going on until I actually tested my hair and realized that my calcium shell had been aggravated, okay, and had gone up super high. So my level was actually 172 um, on my HTMA. So we can see calcium on the hair mineral analysis and really we have um, a big understanding of what's going on inside the body by looking at the hair. So a calcium sh shell is when the calcium on the HTMA is above 165. Okay, so you gotta remember calcium is really meant to be in the bones and teeth. But when it's lacking certain minerals that are meant to keep it in the bone, like potassium, magnesium, boron, those minerals that we absolutely need, then it gets start pulled from the bone and starts building up in the soft tissue. Hair is soft tissue, that's why we see it coming out on the HTMA. Uh, another sign that you're being, it's being lost from the hair can be some, for some people, graying of the hair rapidly, which is the calcium and zinc leaving the body and going up into the soft tissue. So it can also build, be built up in the joints, muscles, organs, and even the brain. And I'm sure some of you have seen what like a calcium deposit looks like um, when you're, sorry, that lighting is a little weird from my window. Um, there, I'm just gonna. So um, I'm sure you've seen calcium uh, deposits building up on like, you know, shampoo bottles or drains in your sink or even if you picture like going into a cave and seeing like a stalactite <laughs> stalagmite right those things that are building up um you can imagine that that's happening in your body okay so it's literally happening in your body when you have that soft tissue calcification happening so you get it building up around the cell blocking certain functions in the body it can build up in the arteries it actually called a plaque cause a plaque buildup so this obviously affects your heart um and this is the way that the calcium starts to build up, up outside the shell, outside the specific, uh, uh, sorry, outside of the soft tissue, you begin to get some specific symptoms. Um, and really someone with a calcium shell presents with pretty like typical symptoms. Um, so it can present with things like joint pain, muscle pain, like I mentioned, and it can also affect somebody's personality as well. So before we get into that, I wanna talk about what causes the calcium shell. So there's a lot of different causes, and I would say that the most common is probably copper toxicity. Copper lowers potassium, and it raises calcium and drives it out of the bone into the soft tissue. So anytime I see a calcium shell in an HTMA, I wanna be looking for copper toxicity. They usually go hand in hand. Um, iodine deficiency can also drive a, a copper shell. And um, when that happens, uh, there you're way more likely to accumulate that calcium. So I have like a bunch of markers that I look for iodine deficiencies on the HTMA. Another cause of the calcium shell, which was my initial cause of my calcium shell, and then the hard water exasperated later, is trauma um, or anything like that that you've been through where you've been through a lot of chronic emotional stress. So like I mentioned in some of my posts, going through my divorce, dealing with that, um, having an abusive partner way back, all that kind of uh, was the initial thing for me to cause that emotional trauma and stress. And um, when you have that calcium building up, it literally prevents the stress and the emotions from getting inside the cell. So it's like, you can think of it as like this protective wall the body's building up to protect you from actually feeling your emotional, your emotions. So it's like when you don't wanna process something or you don't wanna deal with it, you're not ready to unpack it, the calcium shell will literally build up to like protect you from feeling and experiencing that. So the other thing that can happen is you can see sometimes people are taking way too many calcium supplements. So I think that's something as women, as they get older, they hear somewhere, they read somewhere that they need to supplement with calcium to build their bones. Um, but most of them don't have the proper minerals to keep the calcium in the bone or even direct it to the bone. Um, sodium, magnesium, boron, those things. And so the calcium begins to build up for them too in the soft tissue. Uh, so it can also be a cause like what I mentioned from hard drinking water and living in an area where there's a lot of calcium in the rocks, 
um, that can happen. And we definitely, where we live in Santa Barbara, have very hard water. And um, some people may not know that they have hard drinking water uh, because they, they don't uh, feel it as much or they don't really know about it or if there's a water softener on it, it can kind of mask it. So that can definitely all contribute to a calcium shell pattern. Um, hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's are also involved with the calcium shell and that's generally due to like the correlation between the thyroid issues, iodine deficiency, and that sort of thing. So. Um, one of the ways that we help correct it is by actually doing an iodine protocol. Um, and there's some controversial thoughts on iodine, but when it's done properly and it's done well, and you actually have an iodine deficiency, which I can see from the HTMA, then it's actually one of the only effective things to kind of break up the calcium shell. So the other thing that can happen is EMF exposure. Um, and this is like obviously very new. We don't have a lot of research on it, um, but electromagnetic frequencies can affect the calcium channels. So they could drive a calcium shell or someone who has a calcium shell can be more affected by EMF ways. It can, they can be more sensitive to it. So let's talk about some of the symptoms now, okay? Calcium shell symptoms have like a pretty distinct symptom presentation. And the most common they ex symptom they experience will be joint and muscle pain, cramps, muscle spasm, twitches. And this is because calcium is a very sharp mineral and when it's not in the bones where it's supposed to be and it's building up in the joints and the muscles, it can cause a lot of that aggravation. So if you have a lot of that chronic pain that you don't really have an explanation for, like I thought I had fibromyalgia, although 80% of people who do have fibromyalgia have a calcium shell, I was concerned there was something seriously wrong with me. Um, and I got my blood work done and of course, everything looked fine until I looked in a little deeper and I started getting trained in HTMA and I found out what exactly was going on with me. Um, they typically also have symptoms of arthritis or osteoporosis because again, that calcium isn't the bone where it's supposed to be, it's being driven out into the soft tissue. Bone spurs are common uh, with people who have a calcium buildup, um, arterial sclerosis, kidney stones, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue syndrome. Because the calcium mineral really slows you down. So it slows down your metabolism, it slows down your thyroid, it slows down everything. So when that happens, you can imagine that you feel pretty freaking tired. Um, it can reduce circulation, spine movement, uh, blocking movement of the bones, the joints, etc. And um, Obviously, people with a calcium shell are gonna be slow oxidizers. So I have some slow oxidizers that don't have a calcium shell, but all the time I have calcium shell people who are 100% slow oxidizers. So they're gonna have all those symptoms of slow oxidation, which I've spoken of before. Um, copper toxicity sy symptoms could be there. They could have hypothyroid symptoms, um, because they're typically hypothyroid as well, because of the, I told you the issue with the iodine, and they're gonna have poor dental and tooth decay and things like that and they have to go to the dentist a lot and get their cavities filled um, for some people and like i said the sensitivity to the emf waves um so this is something that if you feel some of these things you might want to look into getting your your hair tested to see if you have a calcium shell so let's talk about the emotional aspects of the calcium shell emotionally anyone who has a calcium shell numbs out okay they um numbs out to stress and oftentimes it's an emotionally driven pattern. So calcium shell people feel very disconnected, apathetic, um, emotional numbness. They might even have a feeling of a loss of love for someone or something, or they don't really feel their emotions at the surface. And they have a hard time really connecting with those emotions because the calcium is literally preventing the movement in and out of the cell. So they can feel kind of flat, not feel anything, and there might be some things that used to excite them or make them upset, and now they just kind of feel you know, numb to it. They might experience um, psychological withdrawal, be very out of touch with reality. Depression is common for calcium shell people, brain fog, um, but at the same time, they can also experience anxiety, irritability, emotional outbursts, anger, racing mind patterns, if this pattern is being driven by copper toxicity. So if you have a calcium shell person who has copper toxicity happening at the same time, they can kind of go back and forth between the two. And this was me entirely um, before I dealt with my copper toxicity issue and before I solved my calcium shell, I would kind of go back and forth and I would feel either overreactive or numb and tired. So 
Um, like I said many times before, if you've watched me at all, copper is a very emotional mineral. It makes people feel on edge and crazy. And you might have a person who's going to be fluctuating back and forth between being like really disconnected and kind of depressed, apathetic, and then going from zero to a hundred with their reactions on the other end. So how do we deal with the calcium shell? So obviously we need to break it up um, and it's hard to do as you can imagine because it's called the calcium shell. Um, but people with, with a high level of calcium have um, toxic levels of calcium. We need to figure out how to break it up and put it back in the bone. So I start um, using a supplement um, called MK7 that I used to start to direct back in the bone. And after that, I support their macro minerals for a few months. And after we do that for a few months, we need to do an iodine protocol, which is a very specific protocol. It's not just dumping iodine in your body. Oftentimes the body doesn't do well with large amounts of iodine, um, can potentially be toxic. So we actually do like a six week buildup and then we do a couple things for a couple weeks before we introduce the iodine and then we do an extremely diluted version and we do it over time and build it up. It's a very slow process, but it needs to be that way for the body to be ready for it. Um, and at the same time, we need to really focus on raising potassium because typically calcium shell people have a really about imbalanced calcium potassium ratio. And, um, we want to make sure that we are supporting potassium. So I need to do that for the first four months before we can do the iodine protocol. In my opinion, we need to make sure that we're supporting potassium, we're getting the body strong enough, ready to handle that change instead of just drastically doing things. So you need to remember that for calcium shell people, again, there was probably some sort of abuse or a history of trauma somewhere and I support them from by that by doing some clearing calls, but I also encourage them to do some other outside therapy, obviously EMDR, things that I'm not trained to do to help them kind of process some of this trauma. And then after this, we obviously need to address the copper toxicity that's driving the calcium shell pattern. But addressing cal uh, copper toxicity is a process. We can't start with that. We always have to start with balancing the minerals, addressing what's going on, getting the oxidation rate up so that the body is prepared to detox and open up the detox pathways by balancing things like lithium and boron and bioflow and all the other things that we need to do to get the 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 copper out. So this is a process. And when the calcium is detoxing from the body and moving back into the bone, um, there are some things that can happen. Number one is you could start re-experiencing some of those emotions from past trauma, um, which is why I do encourage people to get a lot of emotional support. I do that and get your body back, but also encourage them, like I said, to get their own therapy and outside sources. Um, you start to re-experience it and really feel it at the surface. And that can be uncomfortable for people, especially if they're not used to feeling it. And it's really important that they're at least aware that it can happen, but also that they have the right support. Um, also, there's some time where you can actually feel the movement of the calcium moving back into your body. I know that I felt a huge difference in my joints. Um, things felt like they were moving a little bit and that can be a sensation. Uh, and sometimes you will experience more joint pain at first um, and some of that pain because calcium is a sharp mineral and we're actually moving it around in the body. So that can cause some aggravations and headaches was a huge thing and I experienced while I had the calcium shell and I didn't know about it, but also as I was breaking it up, I felt a lot of that um, as, the, as the mineral was moving around in my body. So um, yeah, they can also be things that are good, like improving your mood, improving your energy, and obviously feeling better in your joints, being able to work out again. I thought I was gonna have to have hip surgery because my hip was clicking and it was actually just a calcium buildup that I moved around and got rid of. And so <laughs> there's things that really can drastically change when we break up the, the calcium shell and obviously improving the mood. And I really do feel that this is a huge issue to address. And when we do address it, people will notice a significant difference in how they feel. Um, and the minute that I stop doing my uh, protocols for myself, for my calcium level, especially because I'm still in the apartment that has the hard water and I have a filter on my shower, I do lots of things. I don't drink this water, I don't cook with it anymore, but we do shower with it. I do fill up my daughter's bathtub with the shower filter, but the shower filter really doesn't address the hard water. I have to do things for my hair to clear it out. Um, all that stuff, but um, I notice it right away that it starts to build up again and I can feel it in my bones, in my body. So 
it's a process, but I think it's really important to address. And it can be one of those mystery health issues that nobody's talking about and you don't know what's going on. The other thing that happened for me is because my calcium was so high and my potassium was being pushed out as well as my calcium loss, I started having issues with my heart. I started feeling a lot of um, sharp pain in my heart and almost had a heart palpitation. Sometimes it felt just like extreme sharp pain. And um, I went to the doctor and this is before I knew what was going on with my calcium shell. And they just told me I had pulled a muscle. They were like, you're a healthy 35 year old woman. Like what, it, not having a heart attack, you know, or anything like that. And come to find out, I do have heart issues in my family now that I, I know that after this summer. But um, it has all gone away since I have taken care of my potassium, which is a huge heart mineral, since I put my calcium back in the bone and since I've also supported my magnesium loss. So listen guys, minerals are serious things. Our body needs, needs them. They were meant to be built off of them and they're meant to function off of them. When something is off, it literally affects everything. So if you have unexplained joint pain and muscle pain, twitches, all that stuff, if you have fatigue, if you have these moods that are ranging from feeling despondent and just apathetic and not interested in anything anymore or super reactive and flying off the handle for nothing. This isn't just uh, I'm in the wrong marriage or whatever. It literally could be these minerals that are driving things. So I'm a huge believer in addressing both the emotional and physical. That is how we truly get freedom in our bodies. We have to give the body what it needs. We have to address what's happening at a level, level minerally. Um, and we also have to address the emotion. So it's something that I pride myself in doing and get your body back. And I had to do it the hard way. I had to find out all these answers myself. I didn't know what was going on. I went through two divorces, like I've mentioned before. Some of that was because of my own choosing of the wrong partners um, from attachment styles and certain things. But some of it was my body, what was going on in my body. I wasn't feeling the feelings that I thought I needed to feel. I was very confused by my emotions, this calcium shell, and the trauma I was facing was literally determining the choices that I was making. I was confused, I was reactive, I had a lot of, a, a lot of difficulty with postpartum um, because of all these hormonal issues and calcium issues and copper issues that were going on. If you've heard me talk about copper before, you know I've talked about the fact that copper and estrogen are connected, so excess estrogen e leads to storage of copper and storage of copper leads to excess estrogen and synthetic estrogen can raise the copper and the retention of it. So copper tox toxicity is a huge other issue I can't address today. I just wanted to talk about the calcium shell in particular. If this sounds like you and you wanna get help, please reach out to me and I can talk with you about what it's gonna to take to get your minerals tested and break up the calcium shell. And again, this is a process we have to do over a period of time. There's no rushing something like this, but it can be helped, it can be fixed, and I am living proof of that, that you can change your body and change your emotions and the way that you respond really based on what's going on inside of you. So you're not crazy when you go to the doctor and they say everything's fine. Unfortunately, we have to look a little bit deeper. We have to be our own health advocates, okay? We're never gonna get anywhere unless we start asking questions and doing a little digging ourselves. So I'm also a fan of combining blood work with HDMA. Um, I can give you a list of what you should ask for uh, on serum panels and we can really get a beautiful picture of what's going on between the blood and the hair together. And I've got an awesome handy dandy chart that we can type things in and see what lights up connecting with the hair minerals and the blood work. Um, and it's very, very helpful. And the body gives us signs, okay? It gives us signs that stuff is not going well. Sometimes it's not always gonna be seen in the blood. And unfortunately, we need more information than just that to get what's going on cellularly. At a cellular level, we need more information. So I hope this was helpful for you today. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the calcium shell. Again, this is all stuff that I address in my program, Get Your Body Back, where I work with women for six months minimum to address both the emotional issues and also the physical issues contributing to them not feeling at home in their body, not having proper emotional response, feeling all the feelings that I just mentioned, and we really get down to the root of the issue through minerals. I also address gut health through GI map testing and um, infections and things that are going on. Sometimes I have people ask me, 
you know, what comes first, the gut or minerals? Well, literally, I think both are extremely necessary. You can have someone who has chronic infections and gut dysbiosis and things that contributed to them getting their minerals out of balance because they can't absorb their food. But in my opinion, we were meant to drink mineral rich water. We were meant to walk on the earth, absorb minerals through our feet. We we're meant to eat mineral rich food. We're not doing that anymore. And not having proper minerals in the body is contributing to infections in the gut because we don't have enough stomach acid production through sodium naturally to be our first line of defense. So I think they go hand in hand and I help my clients look at both those things to really get a full picture on what's going on. I also do hormone testing, but honestly, as we address the minerals and we address the gut, a lot of hormone stuff seems to fall into place once the minerals have what they need. Once we address some of the lifestyle things to help people's adrenals, hormones can respond really well. But we need to start with the first things first and then work our way down. And in my opinion, that's hair mineral analysis first, GI map second, Dutch test third. Okay, so I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.